What's going on all you minties? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And today, join me for an overview of the Decorum hardcover from Image Comics. So, stay tuned. Before getting started, I want to give the folks at Organic Price Books a thank you for sending us a copy of this hardcover. So what we're looking at here is an oversized hardcover. Um, this is printed by Image Comics, and much like the other Image hardcovers, the dimensions are in oversized format, meaning that these are as tall as Marvel Omnibus editions, just to kind of give you an example of how big these books are. Much like East of West, this has just art on the board, on the back. There is no dust jacket. Sometimes they do dust jackets, like Invincible here is the case of one. Uh, but most of the time, it's just art on the board. The other thing you may have noticed that sets these apart is the flat spine, too. It doesn't have a curved spine, but all of Image hardcovers are like that. Um, this is the cover right here by Mike Huddleston, who is the artist on the book. And then the back cover, the retail price being $39.99, and it is rated mature. Action Adventure, that's what they call this. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think it's a little more complicated than that, though. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this open, talk about the story, show off this beautiful, mind-blowing artwork. And maybe towards the end, I'll talk a little bit about, without going into spoilers, of course, uh, just a couple of thoughts that I had on the story. But, yeah, let's get this open. Let's get this open. Honestly, when I saw this cover, I immediately thought it was Chris Bacello or Mark Buckingham. And we are going to talk about the artwork in here. Uh, this is designed like every other Jonathan Hickman book that he oversees, where there are no covers in between the issues. All the covers are kept in the back. Uh, there are some diagrams and graphs. As a matter of fact... Uh, over here in the credits, uh, Russ Wooden is the letterer, but Sasha E. Head is the designer of the book. And I assume it's the planets and biographies is what she designs. Uh, Mike Huddleston, believe it or not, is the only artist on this. And when I say believe it or not, you're about to see why. Uh, the paper quality here is this thick, glossy paper. And yes, like I said, this is your typical Jonathan Hickman book, so there's a lot of white space everywhere making this more and more 2001 movie book type of epic uh kind of gives you a quick breakdown of the solar imperial preserves here uh it shows you the coming of what you think are conquistadors to uh reaching the shorelines of the mayan or incan or aztec empire but no this takes place in the future these are robotic beings, conquistador-looking beings, that come and capture these, what you thought were Mayan or Aztecs or Incans, uh, but they come and destroy them and capture them to try to get an answer out of them. And they are looking for an egg. And that's really what this is about. It's about the search for an egg. And remember when I said that there's only one artist in here? Yeah, all of this is Mike Huddleston. And Mike Huddleston has done artwork uh, for DC, for Marvel. He did like a Friday the 13th comic. These are just comics that I remember. But I know he's probably best remembered for The Strain, Guillermo del Toro's The Strain, which was a TV show and they made a comic book adaptation of it. Uh, but he's done work for like Gen 13 and some Batman books. Cable. I remember he did a Cable book. So this is how... He is doing the world building. He talks about the galactic sectors. Uh, he talks about the Church of the Singularity, the Union. Uh, and the Church of the Singularity are kind of like... Well, I don't want to say the villains in this. Maybe they are the antagonist in this as they are looking for that egg. And they're going to do anything to get this egg. So, hey, egg. <laughs> it does have rebirth egg in here. So it's a little bit like House and Powers of X. But then again, it's a Jonathan Hickman story, and I got out of this exactly what I was expecting. To be completely confused at first, but couldn't put it down. And that's exactly how I feel about Jonathan Hickman's stories. But before we talk about that, the thing I want you to pay attention to is this range in artwork. Uh, one of my favorite artists of all time is J.H. Williams, and I always think J.H. Williams has this huge range. He can mimic anybody's style. 
But holy crap, it feels like Mike Huddleston is doing the exact same thing here. Some of the artwork here looks like Sean Murphy or Chris Bacciolo, or like I said, um, Mark Buckingham. And then some of it looks like Frank Frazetta. Some of it looks like Topi, uh, the European artist. Even the ships look like they could be designed by Alejandro Jodorowsky. Just to throw in the different type of art that he is just siphoning to, to get this book out. Um, so that's the thing that really stuck with me about this book. Now, you may think, like, what the heck does this have to do with the word decorum? Is it a title? Is it a place? It all makes sense, but I think it has a lot to do with this particular lady. But before we talk about this lady, we have to talk about this young lady right here. And I think it really does center around her. This is a young girl named Niha Nori Sud, and later on you find out that she's 21 years old. So in this distant, distant future, she is a courier. She does deliveries for different people, including uh, this guy right here. And this particular delivery is sort of a bad type of deal. Then you meet this character right here. I love this character. She is probably my favorite character in the whole book. This is uh, Imogen Smith Morley, and she is an assassin. But man, the way that she does it is with style and class, and the way that she talks is just so classy. She is like a true lady. Whereas Niha is, you know, a little vulgar. Not as vulgar as Ma, but that's beside the point. So Niha and uh, Imogen's world are about to come together because, well, Niha is supposed to be delivering this to this particular target that Imogen has gone after. And what does all this have to do with this egg that we saw at the very beginning? Everything. Because, well, Imogen takes Niha in as kind of an apprentice and she takes her to the sister's what is it called? The Sisterhood of Man Assassin uh, Creed. Like, it's this, it's this place where they train you to be an assassin. And yes, it's a ridiculous name, the Sisterhood of Man. Uh, and actually, Nia makes fun of it. But let's uh, skip here a little bit. See what I mean? It's almost like you have this Fraser Irving, you have this use of, like, computer-generated backgrounds mixed in with some, like, sepia uh, tones. And then, of course, you have black and white art in here. And if you're thinking, oh... Is there, there's got to be a reason for that. Maybe like some of the back uh, flashbacks are done in that sepia tone. Or maybe some of the other worlds are done in that CG. Nope, not at all. Sometimes it's just frame by frame. Sometimes the frames are black and white. Sometimes it looks like Bilson Cavage's artwork. And sometimes, like I said, it's like Sean Murphy's artwork. And even in the style that this is written, it fits the tone of the book. Because it's very Hickman. So, you know, you have a lot of action at first. And then you have some slow down of... Uh, here, let me show you an example of what he does in this type of storytelling. So sometimes in between pages, he gives you a breakdown of the world and does more and more world building. This right here is the hierarchy of the church of the singularity. And they're more like the, the they're the robotic people that kind of evolved from an AI. And this is what I was wanting to talk about. So here we have uh, Lady uh, Smith Morley go back home. And she meets Master Morley here. And he starts telling her about this dream that he had. But instead of showing you, it's written out exactly what his dream was. I thought that was a pretty interesting thing, for even for Hickman to do. Um, I figured he would take advantage of Huddleston's artwork to show you a dream. But instead, it's written out. And it's, this isn't the only time that it happens. It happens again later on in the book, just with a dream sequence. Uh, but see what I mean But this beautiful, gorgeous black and white art, and then we go to color, then we go to just different blue tones. It's pretty interesting decisions that they're making for the storytelling. Now, let me show you a couple of action sequences. Here, we'll get to the assassin school right here, just to show you some of the action sequences. I will say, from time to time, I got a little bit lost, not just in the story, but also the artwork. It was a little hard to follow. Uh, not a lot. It only happened a couple times, especially during action sequences whenever a couple of characters are fighting. Um, but that's about the only complaint. I was just blown away by the range in art in this. I think it is absolutely stunning. It's one of the most beautiful books I've read. Um, 
And and I don't think this is the type of story that you can do in any other kind of medium. You can only do this in graphic novel or in comic book medium, as these originally came out in eight single issues. Uh, now, my thoughts on the story... It's so stunning. Uh, my thoughts on the story. I thought the story, like I said, I was lost. And it's okay to be lost. So if you're reading this and you're completely lost, and you're like, man, I saw that overview on Omar's channel... What the hell is this book about? Believe me, if you keep reading, it will make sense. You'll find out what the egg is. You'll see it all come to play. As a matter of fact, it feels like the first six and a half issues go by so slow. And then the last one and a half issues, issues seven and eight, just kind of speed things up. And I didn't expect it to wrap up by issue eight. That's all I will really say about that. Um, without going into spoilers. But I'd love to know what people thought about this. Because apparently it does leave it open-ended. There could be another follow-up to this particular series. Uh, but overall, I found this just one of my favorite reads this year. I think it was very ambitious in the way that it was written, the way that it was drawn. Um, opening it up, even the first few pages, you immediately know you're stepping into a Jonathan Hickman world. And the way I've always described Jonathan Hickman when he's writing a story is... He expects you to understand what's going on, but as the story progresses, more and more clues are laid out. I felt the same way about East of West. I was lost in East of West up until a certain issue, and the issue where it's all kind of thrown at you. So the best advice I can give you is sometimes just don't read anything about what the story is about. Uh, just, you know, be surprised. Be along for the ride. I think sometimes that gives us the best reading experiences, um, and I feel like that's the way to go into a Jonathan Hickman book have no expectations look at the artwork see if it's your type of uh art see if it's up your alley to begin with the the artwork that you're seeing here and then just go into it going oh yeah okay i, I i'm following then you get to a certain issue and you're like oh, oh, oh yeah i get it now i'm smart uh so i don't know am i the only one that feels like that when you finally it comes together and you're like oh oh man i'm a genius i figured it out i'm as smart as jonathan hickman uh, I don't think he writes in a pretentious style, by the way. I just, that's kind of like, I like when writers do that. I don't like when they spoon feed you like, oh, this is this. This means this. Here's exactly how you defeat the villain. I hate when books do that or, or stories, video games, movies, doesn't matter. Um, now, the book has 408 pages and like I said, retails for $39.99. Let's look at the extras in the back, which are mainly the covers. So here are the covers, uh, both the standard edition and the variant cover. And they all have different designs. And they all have some... There's Ma. Didn't really get to show her off. Uh, they all have something to do with the actual story that you're going to be reading about inside. Some people don't like this. Some people like the covers in between the issues. Which is what we've gotten accustomed to. That's what every other uh, comic collection, every other graphic novel or collected edition has out there. Jonathan Hickman likes to stand out. He wants you to experience reading kind of like a prose, like a book, right? Like, um, yes, there are chapter breaks, but you don't have like cover art in between. Okay, some of them do. Forget what I just said. He wants you to have an experience and then look at the back at all the covers. Uh, I've gotten used to it, so I come to expect it from a Jonathan Hickman book. And here's the bio on all the people that put this together. Uh, the book has sewn binding, but let's look at this. I perfection. I'm sure you saw it as it laid down. How it laid. It's great. Let me look at the extras. Make sure I don't skip to anything that will spoil anything. There we go. But that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first-time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this deluxe edition hardcover. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking this up, if you're a fan of Jonathan Hickman, if you've never heard of this book, if you picked up the single issues, 
and honestly what you thought about the ending or what you think the next story arc is going to be about if there is going to be a next one this was the uncanny omar thank you all so much for watching don't forget to smash that like button subscribe ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live we are on Spreadshop and patreon amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so and more importantly everyone stay healthy and safe out there much love <laughs>